I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and this is still the first round of the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship 2024. And with you is uh, your beloved special guest, uh, the runner-up of the Mind Sports Olympia, the captain of Team Finland, and a menace to many of players on board game arena, uh, Otto Ikonen with the screen name Nallerheim. Hi, Otto. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. Um, you did catch me just in a perfect time. I did almost uh, fall fall out on every possible manner, but uh, the situation is uh, is uh, saved at least somewhat. So let's hope uh, the rest of the stream is going to be uh, be uh, be able to go through like without any interruptions which i believe it will and i am um, also very excited to be here so thank you for the invitation well let's see let's see so we're gonna have an <laughs> alexi and an out of breath auto uh trying to make our best sense of the moves that are going to be made today by the portuguese and the american players and this is the matchup that we're going to view today so both teams still haven't had uh, a match in this group as this is still round one so let us look at the group in which they're in so the Tutesia team defeated uh, Otto's Finland very unfortunately but I'm sure Finland will come back and Taiwan defeated Hong Kong for the second year in a row that's why these two teams have already victories and today we're gonna find out who's gonna uh, still tie these uh, two teams for the first place. It's going to be either Portugal or the United States. On paper, Port Team Portugal seems to be a bit more decorated uh, with, uh, I think, two number four finishes, if I'm not mistaken, but at least one number four finish in the, um, in the world and certainly a large history of achievement. Best finish for the United States, I think, was fifth or sixth two years ago, uh, but they've brought some new players into their team. So, uh, the match is about to start, so we're not going to do much of pre-match uh, analysis, but Otto, which do you think is the most um, interesting duel to look at? Um, well, I would say that what most uh, pops into my eye uh, would be a Wizards versus uh, Sports R, as um, I am heavily kind of in favor of the players that um, I have been uh, that I have had the chance to uh, to meet in in person and uh, Wizards is certainly one of those and uh, not only is he a great player but um, with, with, with um, of course some room for with of course some room for improvement as do we all but uh, he is a super uh, positive, uh, a, su a super positive person in uh, well, in in person as well, which I also love. So I wonder if that uh, positiveness is going to be uh, be uh, mirrored into his uh, game style today. We'll have to wait and see. But I hope it certainly does. Well, your wish is my command, and I have already opened the game, and the positive side for Wizard Chess is that uh, he is playing the green meeples, has one more of these meeples in hand, and uh, got four points for a city cap, uh, restricting his own city, but I'm pretty sure the player with the green meeples is going to do just fine. Um, so that's Andrew Naylor from the United States, uh, also progressed very rapidly. He's actually the reigning United States champion, and I think he achieved this title only like after one year of playing, or something like, basically a smaller number of years than it normally takes people. Uh, and uh, sport that is a well-known player, that's Ricardo Araujo, who is, uh, or was, the winner of the Mind Sports Olympiad in 2020. So that was the first year when the Mind Sports Olympiad went online. So I think we're going to do this like this. I'm going to say what's happening on the board. And Otto, I'm pretty sure you're going to have your expert comments on the moves and uh, roast about players' mistakes as you like doing. So we see Ricardo here with seven points. He just started a city at the top. Oh, wait. In the meantime, of course, I have to say hello to y'all. Hi, Ludo uh, Janhead. Hi, Crafty. Hi, Mingo. 
uh, high DK and high um, max. Um, oh yes, we're going to talk about curiosities of the championship soon enough, maybe in one of the breaks. In the meantime, Ricardo just wasted a tile. Go ahead, criticize Otto. I'm puzzled by this move. Uh, I still have some uh, <coughs> some improvements to do on my screen, so I am not 100% in, but um, um, with the ongoing situation, I am not too uh, interested, uh, I'm not, not, not too keen on seeing that um, um, the left straight road just got added to an empty two-point road which can which is controlled by no one and also doesn't bother any kind of a a feature from both players even though like despite um despite the fact that i'm actually not aware of which player placed it i'm still not a fan <laughs> which i think is is already um kind of enough uh, in itself, because when uh, because when you can see a move that benefits uh, that that benefits like neither player um, doesn't matter who made it, then um, it's in my books always going to be a major mistake because you want to extract as much value as you possibly can from every single tile you get and uh, often just exactly just extracting that one bit of value from like i don't know maybe one or two points like no matter how minimalistic value you actually get can be very decisive well i have to agree with you here if the game is lost by one or two points we will by somebody we will know that this is as, as a result of this move but a lot of things have happened on the board since then so andrew here at the top is using his classical classical strategy i've seen him make this move um a lot just using the divider to drop a very early farmer it's a double edge and committal move but certainly can yield positive results if uh, Green manages to pick up a couple of city caps along the way. And in the meantime, Ricardo's building a city at the bottom, which is already worth 9 points, and it will be worth a whopping 20 points if it is completed. And I think Ricardo just found a great move to protect the city and leave two tiles still available uh, that um, can be used to finish that city. So that's a 75% chance and certainly a very, uh, very strong... Uh, chance uh, to succeed and even if that city is not completed uh, this meeple is already giving red nine points red is now trying to attack the farm uh, in the north countering two monasteries by green which are developing rapidly and green decided not to attack uh, not to try and block the city at the bottom just yet instead placing this triangle over here and pre-building a nice 12 point city for himself with a couple of Dorito tiles like this for example and this is exactly what Wizard Chet does excellent prioritization and now there are four tiles remaining that fit into that square there's still four Dorito tiles left and I think it's like a 90 something percent probability to get that so soon enough we will be seeing um, Andrew finishing the city, adding a point to the monastery, meeping this five-point road, expanding his farm, and so on and so on and so on. And now Wizard just tries to block the city at the bottom, but Ricardo draws the perfect saving time. I think he should absolutely use this. He can go over here at the bottom, and yes, he does. He leaves himself a... Whoa! A... Um, 75% uh, chance to complete the ruin, but he also meeples another ruin. That's interesting. Uh, Sporter gets four points for the road. In the meantime, excellent pre-building move here by Andrew. Uh, so it's making sure that when Andrew draws a Dorito, he'll place it over here and not only get the city back, but will, he will also meeple this six-point road. So a great sequence. Like both players are exchanging lucrative moves and this will end up being a high scoring game sporter now with 19 points on the scoreboard continues to city at the bottom and whilst wizard chess is thinking where to place this straight line which is a difficult tile to place i want to know otto what do you think about the decision of red to place um this guy over here early on the ruin which he now continuing 
I'm not sure if I really like it that much. I don't think the ruin was going to be a priority to Meeple, especially knowing that um, at least, I think, four or even, yeah, four of the tiles that would be great to actually take this ruin later on, um, meaning the road triangles, uh, do already have significant use elsewhere for wizard chess. And uh, with two meeples in hand, um, and actually wizard chess might have, uh, might, might have only had one meeple in hand um, at the time that uh, Sport uh, took this uh, took this uh, took this ruin. I don't think a wizard chess would have um, been able to take that ruin like at any point. So I don't think he, uh, he had a, uh, a like any any actual urgency to take it i think he should have taken it like later just, just like just wait a couple of moves uh, just wait a couple of moves more to see how things develop maybe um may, maybe instead use his maple advantage to uh, to attack the the upper upper field with even a second maple although he doesn't have one maple there uh, at the moment but uh, he's, he's gonna have, like, very likely. And uh, he could have added uh, another meeple to the field uh, earlier as uh, um, as well, possibly through any city plus uh, road tile. Actually, no, that would I thought that not that would not have been uh, possible. But I think he still had um, better uses for. Uh, I think he still had better use to take uh, advantage of his uh, maple advantage elsewhere. I think the ruin is not just a uh, a priority, and I think it should have been just taken um, later, possibly not even um, at all. Yeah, like even even though it is worth six points without added tiles, it might be so that uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, you might be just up enough points that uh, uh, you that you just want to maximize the meeple amounts in in your hand to like fully focus on like field fights or for anything else that would possibly make a significant uh, edge to your winning chances instead of a ruin that uh, can be just collect like passive points it's not going to be often often the case but uh, there's always the likelihood well, well, well. Uh, and in the meantime, the ruin indeed hasn't been developed by much. However, Sporter isn't experiencing any meeple shortage for uh, doing that, so that sort of worked out. In the meantime, uh, hi Girappa, hi Hugo, hi Carlis. Uh, so uh, the ruin has been developed to nine points. Both players are reluctant to take some um, city caps lying around. Instead, uh, Red was using the city cap to connect to the field, which is controlled by Green. Green is meepling things very aggressively. He was trying to attack this ruin at the bottom, but unsuccessful so far. This city meeple is temporarily stuck for one point. Uh, now, Sporter managed to have a seven-point monastery, which is now blocked, and I believe there's still one more tile remaining that can give this green an 8-point road and a meeple back. In the meantime, Sporter drew the last remaining dagger to connect to the main field, and he scored 4 points over here. Uh, of course, uh, helping to develop uh, Green's Monastery, but still, Red has to be happy to be sharing this 15-point field. Wizard Chess will probably be meepling another Monastery, 9 points for the scoreboard, just like that. This, t this field is still up for grabs, and Sporter, if he wants, he can actually Go over here, try to connect through a curve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But there are no curves remaining. Are there cur curve roids remaining? I think there is one Dorito tile with a road. So just like this, except without the shield. And if he goes over here, there will be at least one tile. Actually, I think it's going to be two tiles. Yes, 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 yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, two tiles. That thing and a crossroads that fit into uh, this square. And it seems like a good 
chance. But of course, the crossroads, he won't use the crossroads to connect to the field. He will use the crossroads to finish the city. Remember, there's still one of these guys still in the game. Andrew drew the first one. Ricardo still hoping for the second one, which would surely give him the win. So, um, Ricardo really debating hard where to place this Dorito Tall, thinking of maybe attacking the field or starting a new city at the bottom. What would you do here, do here Otto, in Ricardo's situation? Well, I'm trying to like somewhat quickly count the points, and uh, if I'm in in the in the in the position of uh, Red here, I don't think I'm gonna be like. Uh, behind at all I think which is a quick point count um, because you have like two lucrative ruins and uh, from which you can actually like um, of course finish the other one for a huge deal of points so uh, so uh, sport might not actually have to take like any sort of chances he um, he might be just more willing to actually Use use one of his meeples to equalize the the six point city that uh, we suggest has at the lower part of the map and just uh, deny we suggest from getting a second meeple back and then uh, uh, thus deny the we suggest the possibility of uh, of uh, attacking the field with a second meeple whilst still having a meeple to score quick points with. So, and he, it seems that Ricardo is watching the stream because he obeyed your command exactly. And Wizard just decided, you know what? I can't afford to wait until I have another meeple back. I have to attack the field with my last meeple. And I have to agree with him. There's still two more tiles remaining that fit into that square. Assuming that he's going to maybe get the crossroads that fits for red here that's probably the only chance for andrew to win this game then he would go over here and gain 15 points for the field which would i think temporarily put him ahead the problem for that is of course that sporter still has a meeple left to score with and he just drew the straight line the last straight line that would have fit in the square and would have given uh, green two extra points and a road meeple back but now unfortunately for green this ain't gonna happen however green completing the city on his field scoring three potential extra points when this uh, this field connection here is complete I'm not sure if it is gonna matter because what needs to happen is for green to draw this crossroads but even then green might be a little bit short so let's see sporter attempts to block and now wizard chess should find the move to save that connection but he does not do that oh okay that makes perfect sense now that's an excellent move excellent move here because i forgot that there was a dagger left but so unfortunate oh so unfortunate for um for wizard chess here that whilst he was protecting against one blocking opportunity, another blocking opportunity opened and Sporter used that blocking opportunity and I believe there is nothing left that fit into the square. Even if Wizard Chess does draw the final um, City plus Crossroad tile, which he does, he won't be able to use it to connect over here, uh, which is why... Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. So... Let me think about this, what he could have done. Had he blo had he defended a little bit differently, Andrew would have scored 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 17 extra points. Just trust me on that count. So let's see if um, this indirect blocking wh where he should have blocked, uh, where he should have defended from here directly, let's see if this has cost him or not. Oh, well... It seems. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no! It seems that Wizard Chess would have won the game, though. Because look at this. He's minus. Uh, yeah. Does seem so, but uh, when you when you take into account that uh, he has lost 
um, at least one monastery point, of course, um, because uh, Wizard just now was able to get one monastery point uh, with the final city crossroad, then uh, um, that also would, would not create the city. So the field would be 15 points. No, no, 18, um, 18, because that ha one, wait, two, one, three, two, three, yeah, yeah, because there, because there's this piece which he created. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, be, you, the, right, the, the field would have been 18 points, and he would have, he would not have gained this monastery points, which means that wizard chess would have had 17 points more, and he would have won with a one point difference. So Andrew here, unfortunately, winning his, missing his winning move. He needed to defend, but he needed to defend differently. He needed to defend this connection in such a way that would allow him to draw the crossroads. And think about this. He needed the crossroads anyway. He needed to draw the crossroads, making sure to make sure that Ricardo could not complete his city. And if he's going to need that crossroads, he might as well set up a good use of that crossroads elsewhere. And I think this is the chance that... Uh, the American player unfortunately missed and my American fans should be sad however it does seem that most of you are rooting for Portugal so I want to know which one of you are rooting for Portugal and is there anybody here oh no I see DK rooting for Team USA anybody else rooting for Team USA because USA needs your support for sure in the meantime Otto shall we proceed with this duel or shall we look at somebody else well, um, I am a fan of uh, giving some uh, featuration to um, to as, ma as many players as we can, given that no stream can really give uh, uh, can can't really give um, the uh, comments to like to like every single player. So, um, as uh, if we, if we can feature like um, like three different matches, maybe. Four, you know, you know, in a in a very best case, and you know, I'm always down to do that, because I mean, I also think of the streams as a way for for all the players that uh, get featured, that it's gonna be a good use for their time to actually look back at them, and uh, see what they could have done differently, and thus evolve themselves, because usually, you know, when you go into YouTube and you look. Uh, you are trying to look for uh, games that you are, that have yourself included. Uh, for many, for, for many players, that's not going to be the case. Well, I have to agree, and uh, <laughs> of course, I already picked uh, picked a game for we as we talk. And so Guillermo Neves of Portugal with Queen and Glovier, who is also very strong Azul player, very interesting um, style um, of play, very balanced. He's not playing against Sheldal from the united states they have 21 tiles remaining in their second game which was the first game was won by the portuguese player but in the second game it seems that the american has more points and uh the play with the yellow meeples uh, which is glovier has a lot of features blocked on the board this four point city is never going to see the light of day this nine point field here is shared so it ain't mean much and this nine point field here is shared by these two meeple so it ain't mean much and what else we have well we do have some couple of cities which are semi blocked because i believe there's uh, one more starting tile remaining that fits into this square which would allow yellow to get a meeple back and the 12 points and also there are two daggers that are remaining to fit into this square which would allow yellow to get six points and a meeple back so um glovier oh fantastic tile for glovier but what do you do with it so he could go over here protect this city pre-build the road he could go over here also protect the city but a different city he could take three points over here uh, or he could go over here and block this meeple off green how do you I think, Otto, you're like a really strong... Uh, I think your main Carcassonne strength is prioritization. What, how would you have prioritized if you were yellow? Do you agree with yellow's move? Um, I gotta say, like, not really, because you have so many features that you kind of need to be saved and when you only have 50 50 say uh, possibilities of to save in the best case scenario there are so many like different types of tiles that uh, you need to to every single place 
and with the 50-50s, I don't think it's going to be uh, worth your time to invest a valuable tile to maybe be uh, to maybe be able to finish a city whereas you can like neutralize the that uh, threat that your opponent would impose had that uh, meeple uh, if the, if that meeple were to be blocked so i think um i would have preferred glovia to actually add one point to uh, uh, two Sheldal's uh, city at the bottom and just take a, a, a four point road that he can then finish with uh, with any curve or with a uh, or, or with a, or with a crossroad. Loving the idea here, Otto, but Glovier has different plans. I think the goal of this move was not only to save this meeple, but also to pre-build a long road going through the city, and Glovier is going all in. I have to disagree with the placement of this meeple, though. I think he should have left it alone just like it is. But he decides that he wants to not, that he wants to, well, and he successfully decides that he gets a six point city. And look at this, a 10 point row just out of nowhere. So this saving the city was not just saving the city. It was creating this cunning plan of a gigantic road. And he still has the starting tile that could allow him to finish one of those cities, but not so fast as Sheldahl is still massively ahead because he uh, they're equal, equal on the scoreboard Sheldahl has the bigger ruin for a couple of points that's plus two and Sheldahl has a seven point monastery and a two point road so that's uh, she has a seven point monastery versus a five point city so that's plus four and uh this two point road and this two point city are roughly equal so he needs to find a way to get four points somehow and he decides you know what well, uh, he decides nothing because it wasn't his turn, but Sheldahl is now placing a six-point uh, city, six-point ruin at the top, and he also will have a chance to get another road plus city tile to complete it. It's so interesting. He's going to get a meeple back. It's such an interesting dynamic of this game because the tile run out is such that there were still many city plus road tiles remaining. It's a rare occasion in competitive Carcassonne, actually. So... And both players are recognizing this fact through this uh, long road and with the city, which will help Sheldahl complete this monastery. And now Glovier needs to decide, is he going, how is he coming back from the 7-11 point deficit, I believe. He still has two meeples to show for himself. If he goes over here, he's going to score four extra points. And this is exactly what he does. Two points for the road, two points for the city. So a seven-point difference, if I am not mistaken. Uh, but you should not take this for granted. Fantastic tile for Sheldahl, as he probably will go over here and complete his monastery and get two more points. Devastating. Well, or maybe uh not. It might not be the case because I think um, in order for Glovia to win, um, he might have to actually attack the the uh, what uh, eighteen point field, but uh, because there are so many uh, so, so few access spots, the only viable option might be that Glovia has to actually add a point to to Sheldahl's two point road at the bottom and try to make a loop then try to get the final remaining road dorito mm. and uh, try and connect to the to the, to the 18 point field uh, which would only be actually a 16 point move but he would also bring an additional city to the field so a what a, a 19 point move in in just two moves and given the opportunities that uh, 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 that uh, appear on the board, uh, it's not going to be that easy to find like any other high scoring uh, a, any a, any other high scoring opportunity other than attacking the field. And there is only like like one singular possibility to attack to attack the field from, which is through Sheldahl's Road. Oh, this is an amazing find. Yes, you see, this this is what Otto does to you. This is why you keep losing to Otto on Board Game Arena, my dear viewers. 
because of stuff like this, just out of nowhere, the field's connection, it's a counterintuitive find because it involves adding points for green, but uh, it's, you know, probably the only option to get this many points. Again, I'm going to try and draw this on the board, imagine a farmer here, but Sheldahl decides to do this, and I absolutely love it. So Sheldahl right, takes the opportunity that Glovier was going to take, just so that Glovier cannot take it himself. And moreover, in order to win, Glovier now obviously has to draw this row Dorito tile, uh, so that Green doesn't draw it. And then Glovier would kind of need to draw something else as well, maybe a starting tile or another city cap to finish this city on the left, if there even is one. Brilliant, brilliant find by Otto, and only then by the American player, so my guest was faster. I am in, definitely in love with, with uh, Sheldahl's move, because number one priority when you are ahead is to strictly remove any possibilities from your opponent to make these high scoring moves. And this is exactly what uh, Sheldahl does here. Although I think it might have been even better for him to actually direct the uh, city cap to the other direction so that he would actually not even have to meeple it. Because he would, he would be able to just uh, have a meeple in hand and just block the only possible field connection that, that uh, was uh, presented on the board. But actually, I'm loving the meeple, because the, the idea what this does is that it, it makes sure that yellow has to draw this tile. So it really mm -hmm. significantly reduces the winning chances of yellow, because yellow has to draw this tile so that he draws the tile that green needs, but then also yellow has to draw some other tile that he needs, such as that starting tile, and that's already, I think, actually a 10% winning chance for Glovier. So he would probably, if you ask me, like the win path for Glovier is just take the 10%, go over here, I don't know, meeple the road maybe. Yeah, meeple this other road. Perfect, perfect. That's a great idea. And just simply keep hoping that he's going to draw that tile and the starting tile, I guess. And this is exactly what Guillermo does with 30 seconds remaining on the board. Again, can't really do that much. I think actually he will not be able to win this game because uh, the Dorito is drawn by Sheldahl, but even if Glovier drew this Dorito, this would not have been enough. Of course, the starting tile for Glovier is nice, but it means nothing when you're losing a huge field. And that's the brilliancy of the find of Sheldahl, is that he was playing the probabilities. He made sure that Glovier is, cannot win by just drawing this tile. Glovier would also need to draw this tile. And uh, the American just needed to drew, draw only one of two excellent showcase of how probabilities work in Carcassonne and amazing field vision. So congratulations to Sheldahl for equalizing this game, I, uh, this duel, I think. We're going to see what the score is. And... Um, probably... Shall we watch their decider, actually? I'm too invested sure. in this right now. Sure, yeah, that's fine for me. I mean, uh, al although given the uh, uh, quote-unquote speech that I uh, uh, gave just a minute ago, I mean, we did only see, like, what, uh, the final 20 tiles of this game or so, so um, it uh, it's not definitely not going to hurt to see a full game and, uh, you know, more coverage for, for these uh, players. Yeah, let's make a little bit of an exception. So uh, it's just such an interesting duel and very interesting how these two players are uh, playing in the opening. So, no, wait, what am I doing? Actually, we don't know that. So let's just uh, real quick check how the other players are doing. So I know that Wizard Chess plays super fast. Let's see. Sporter... Sporter. Oh, wait, I'm I'm I am doing the wrong screen. This is the screen. I have so many screens open. Uh oh. Sporter won, but what was that? 
the result I mean, is cancelled? Uh, or we should just run out of time? I think so. Or... But wait, wait, but why does it say that Wizard Chess had a thinking time of six seconds? This is so weird. Huh. Uh, I mean, maybe wrong settings somehow? Does no. it make sense? Maybe they disconnected or something. Because they clearly lost that game and they were kicked out. Certainly an interesting situation. I mean, I am... Um, well, we know that Sporter is playing now. So I think they're still starting a second game. That was just a cancelled game. Something went wrong in the settings. Um, well, seven tiles remaining. I guess we might stick around to the end here and then go back to our to our decider. So will the American be able to equalize or will the Portuguese player show us why he is a recent Mind Sports Olympiad winner? Lots of monasteries for Sporter, well, namely two in the center and two extra points on the scoreboard. Lots of farmers from both players. Lots of farmers for both players. Three points for Wizard Chess at the bottom. Sporter will now probably connect the fields over here. Let's actually have a look at the farmers. This is equal. Ah, Sporter has the main fields over here for 12 points. And also, but this guy here, green, has a secondary field for a six point, which is nowhere near enough to equalize. It does look like it's going to go the Portuguese player's way. But can he leverage his meeple advantage? That's the question. Two green meeples versus one red meeple. I see something. Does... It does seem yes. like Sporter is like plus nine at the moment, now plus six. And um, there is a threat of equalizing the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe there's one more straight road. So mm -hmm. there is still a tile that fits into that square, which would uh, equalize all the fields. And these nine points will belong to not only red, but also both players. So an eight point move is being threatened here by Wizard Chess, who also owns another six-point field on the right. Are there two curves re uh, available? Uh, no, I don't, I don't There's think defi so. definitely no two curves. But Kay. Wizard Chess claims a six-point field, hoping for the straight line. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was also a move that added one point to his monastery, so that's seven extra. So I believe it all comes down to the straight line. And he does not get this, and Sporter gets the straight line, and I believe with that the victory in his game, it all came down to a coin flip. But did Wizard just actually need to meeple this field um, on his previous move? I think so. It because uh, if he gets, if he just takes four points, right, and then he meeple, and then um, mm -hmm. he's gonna be like um, maybe like plus, uh, sorry, like minus one or something. Then he gets the uh, the the road. Uh, I don't think it matters uh, whether his final meeple um, is uh, losing value like as two as a two point road uh as opposed to a six point farm because you would have had because you would have been able to take four points from the city plus the two points from the road which would which would be six points anyway right so i don't think oh my god you're right you're right otto he had a win again yes if he scored four points over here that he would have still had a meeple left. And there were two scenarios. Either Wizard Chess gets the straight line and connects to the field and everything is wonderful. Or he gets this tile and then he can meeple the six-point field and enjoy the benefits of the four-point city and again. And he would have won by one point. Wizard Chess, for two games in a row, missed a move that would give him a win by one point. A game which could have been... A match which could have been a duel which could have been a 2-0 win for the American player ends up to being a win of Portuguese player. This is so heartbreaking, Otto. 
Yeah, this is this is kind of a, a very tragic situation because on one uh, one a, a very high priority thing that I <clears throat> I often find people missing out is that they are not fully aware of the point situation. Like they see where they can uh, where they can uh, uh, score points, but uh, they often miss out that. Um, they might not even need those features to play out in in like in in the in the most perfect manner. Just uh, like uh, as we can see here again, uh, I mean, the, he um, I, Wizard just didn't did not take into account the the net amount of points that he could gather, as he was not going to be able to. Uh, to prevent sport from taking at least five points from the ruin or just five points by taking the six point uh, uh, field next to wizard's monastery later it would have been five points anyway right yes yeah, so this just goes to show you that in carcassonne you don't want to score as many points as possible you just want to score more points than your opponent and in mm -hmm. the end game, end game is so much different than other stages of the game. You're supposed to just precisely calculate the move sequences and make the move that you need. And the mistake of um, Andrew here, that was basically make, making a move that gave them a 50-50 shot at the win of the game instead of having like 100% or something like this. So, um, but yeah, not the easiest of finds, but I think he still had enough time to actually try and calculate this. So very instructive commentary, Otto. Thank you for pointing that out. But speaking of big ruins, there is one available for both players in the game between Golvir and Sheldahl, or maybe a reminder that this is a decider for this duel. The game is halfway through with 29 tiles remaining. The Portuguese player and the American player both have three meeples in hand. The Portuguese player has a fourth meeple right back as they complete a nine-point monastery and they're 13 points on the scoreboard. But Sheldahl should not be uh, afraid as they're very close to finishing their eight-point monastery and maybe dropping a farmer or meepling another monastery depending on what they get. Glovier, Meeple's a 9-point field, pre-building a 6-point road, like there's no tomorrow. It's a very, very aggressive move here by the Portuguese player. Maybe he's trying to create some volatility in the position, given that this yellow Meeple has not yet connected to this juicy, juicy ruin in the center, which is likely to be a game-defining feature, but right now... The connection has been completed, and if somebody manages to get a third meeple into this ruin somehow, surely this would mean a win to them. In the meantime, Sheldahl is playing a farmer as well. This is now a nine-point field, as Sheldahl gets four extra points for the city. So it's, it's slightly outscoring the six-point field of Glovier, but surely it will be connected. And Glovier, again, playing very aggressively, meepling a six-point field, pre-building a four-point road, hoping to get these four points, connect the farms, and outscore this guy over here and connect everything. But uh green drops another farmer at the bottom trying to reconnect yellow drops yet another farmer trying to reconnect yellow is committed now to playing the remainder of the game with two meeples at most sheldahl at the top is he having visions of trying to take over the city completely i believe he might be but instead he makes a very strong move i believe trying to block this field connection and i believe this is a complete block yes it is a complete block there are no tiles that fit into this square that's a brilliant find here by sheldahl as he will be able to equalize this field over here and yellow will be stranded with only six points a high level game over here and even though sheldahl is 15 points behind on the scoreboard given that he has this eight point monitor which is about to finish and this five point city which could easily turn into a 12 point city with just a single city cap 
uh, I would say that the Americans should be hopeful in this situation, especially after two more road points. Well, surely the road points have to be the deal breaker. Glovier with a curve tries to block Sheldahl's monastery, but just in time, Sheldahl draws a fantastic tile that gets him nine points on the scoreboard from the completed monastery and seven points for a new monastery, which he can still complete. Glovier is desperately trying to prevent him from, from doing so. Making sure I, that... I, hmm? I, I gotta say, I gotta point out that I think uh, Glovier trying to uh, trying to har harass Sheldal's monastery is not the priority because uh, when uh, when uh, Sheldal actually plays the triple city to block off Glovier's third people from the uh, from from the field, uh, what I think uh, Sheldal had to be very aware of that his second people or uh, yeah his second people was not on the field yet, and so that. Could have been actually a a uh, spot for Glovier to actually try and block that one uh, green farmer to just a three point uh, to just a three point farm, and then he would have a, a twelve or a fifteen point farm with a majority, uh, which um, would have served him very well. Instead, he now went for a. A, a a sort of an uh, a sort of a useless or well a mostly useless block um, for on on Sheldon's monastery, whereas he could have restricted that farmer to a field 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 tile, and because there were no uh, remaining road monasteries, at least he could have then tried to make a full block to a road monastery tile, because there, there were still like plenty of tiles with field field. But no, well, not that many tiles with field, field, field. <laughs> exactly. And in fact, uh, at the time of placing this straight line, there was only one tile remaining with field. Well, there are two, but um, and, but Glovier ended up actually drawing the last remaining monastery, which is now off screen. Let me move it a little bit over here. So this meeple, in fact, would have been stranded by three points, but now it ain't gonna work like that, as Glovier is now trying to desperately sneak in a third meeple into the farm, but Sheldahl very wisely will now go over here and complete a two-move blocking sequence, leaving Glovier without winning chances, if I'm not mistaken, because Sheldahl, eight extra points on the scoreboard, two extra meeples, and uh, Glovier... It's not gonna be actually... It's not gonna be a, a full block though. There's still still one dagger though. Oh, there's still yes, yes, yes. There's still one dagger, right? But at least there ain't gonna be the curves. So he might mm -hmm. wanna go here. And uh, he this is actually be a useful move because it will make sure that at the very least the field stays at nah. Actually, it's well, it, it definitely helps to reduce the probabilities uh, to fifty fifty. But the question is, is there a counter threat? I see one. Maybe he wants to go over here and like connect to the big ruin because there's still a tube remaining. So if we just want to create a counter threat, we can go up top uh, and then connect over here and at least create a 50-50 chance of connecting whilst maintaining the possibility to still complete the block. But Sheldahl tries to go for the 50-50 move. Glovier gets a meeple back and some points on the scoreboard. Only minus four right now, but oh. Sheldahl gets the dagger. So this meeple is trapped here with zero points and our American viewers can probably um, breathe a sigh of relief, at least for now. Sheldahl, what are they going to do? Maybe just is take... There a possi hmm? Is there a possibility for Glovier to still try and come to the field? Maybe like with a a uh, straight road from the right and then a curve i think I'm there are not no sure. straight roads remaining unfortunately but ah there is a no there are no t-shaped crossroads no straight roads no crossroads utter misery if you are on team portugal misery and sadness and negative how about motion. how about a crossroad and then a Regular curve? No crossroads. Wait, did I miscount? No crossroads. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why am I counting only like six? <laughs> uh, there are two of them nearby. And, well, they are crossroads, but not the T-shaped crossroads. But it doesn't 
matter if the, if there is a ah. irre irregular dagger, a, a regular irregular curve, because you can come from from the from the upper part. Right, right, right. But will Sheldal notice that? Oh, this is brilliant. He can go over here and drop a farmer like this, and this move will give him fifteen points if he goes over here. Yeah, because I was thinking, I was thinking you were talking of a connection like this from the bottom. But there's mm -hmm. also a possibility of getting it from the top, like that. Oh, this is lovely. And this is probably what's gonna happen, because even though Sheldal drew one crossroads, there's still the quadruple city cross, or the quadruple road crossroads remaining, unless it was discarded earlier. We don't know how the game was developing. Well, well, well. Sheldal now trying to solve this endgame with a minute remaining on the clock. Do they block a field connection opportunity? Do they go for the field connection themselves? Do they take four points over here? Or do they take four points over here by completing three points for the road and one point for the monastery? In 57 seconds or less, we are going to find out. But is the bill going to be actually enough? Though I think uh, Sheldal is actually like plus seven or something, plus eleven. And now, even even if Clovio goes for it, I which think he uh, if I, if I, which he should. But I think even if I count it, uh, if, if I count it right, Sheldal is like plus eleven right now. And if Clovio connects, it's going to be actually a a plus twelve move. Fifteen. Because 15. He, because because everything oh, yeah, 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 uh, 15, but uh, it, uh, then uh, Sheldon will actually have to make a plus, plus five move, actually, because the, the tie is not enough, but uh, hmm. does he then be, uh, is he, is he going to then be forced to get a tile which gets him like a, which an, an, an additional city or something? Ah, he could just well, win uh, the coin, he could just win the coin flip, he could just win it the boring way. <laughs> That's easier, but it's it's less content. <laughs> yes, I am disappointed at board game arena developers these days. Today, <laughs> I think I think Lavier would have had it. I think Lavier would have actually had it, because I don't think there are good places to make a five point move. No, what was the last tile? Yes, there was no there was no five point move. Ah, it it would have been a nice. Okay, so it would have actually worked. So definitely respect for Glovier for uh, finding this 50-50 sequence in a game where chances seemed slim for the play with the yellow meeples, but he found a way to make it into a coin flip, but of course, the master of coin flips, Sheldal, does it again and takes this jewel and finally, after, what, almost an hour of streaming, puts the United States on the scoreboard. Portugal 2, USA 1, Portugal needs to win just m one more game in order to win this match completely to so the final score wait plus 18 wait. for we must have miscounted um, something plus 18 for Sheldal yeah but let's, um, so Sheldal made a six point move instead of no no I think everything is right Sheldal made a six point move because he drew the curve right so mm -hmm. uh, if he had he drawn not the curve but that other thing the biggest move he could have scored was a four-point move over here. So these mm -hmm. are two extra points for Sheldal that we need to reduce, and Glovier would have had 15 Still not more. enough, though. Yeah, so Sheldal would have won by one point anyway, no? Yeah, I, I think so, I think so. Yeah. Well, anyway, at least it would have been... It would have been more... Uh, Everybody would be closer to their edge of the seats, but it is what it is. Convincing win for the American. Best effort by Guillerme. It's just not going to cut it. So we have two boards remaining. KB versus Antonio Paiva and Crocodile Fundy versus Foam. How is Antonio doing versus KB? Well, they are close to finishing their second game uh, and I'm gonna open it started 24 minutes ago if Antonio manages to win this game Portugal will win this 
match. Six tiles remaining for these guys as KB scores two extra points. And it does look that the American is ahead almost 20 points on the scoreboard and has a lot of stuff on the board as well. Complicated position. I'm going to open the other game in the meantime. Otto, please feel free to make sense of that one. Okay, so let's have a, a first things first. So a point count uh, plus 14 for KB plus uh, the ruin in the middle for 6, 10, 11 points. So plus 25, 28 for the road, um, 34 for six point field, 38, um, 31, 25, 21. And then the field is equal, so it seems like uh, KB is at the moment plus 21 points ahead and is threatening to win over the large field. Oh, but Paiva does have two meeples on the field, which is worth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 points. So still plus 6 for KB if I have not miscounted. And uh, as Paiva doesn't really seem to be able to make that many points or quick points at least uh, it does seem like uh, uh with, with, like with a quick look that uh, whatever paiva does it might not be enough because kb still has two tiles remaining and i don't think paiva can use his uh, meeple anywhere at the moment um is there a crossroad though one two three four four five six seven no crossroads so not going to be able to meeple the the upper three point field and then maybe connect all fields together via a crossroad and then something else um trying to see if there is actually a win for Piva here but uh, it's looking quite slim well it does get one point to his road but uh, they're just meeple the city that... cap no he just wants to gamble he just hoped to maybe score a little bit more maybe able to score four points for the city and then lie down for a six point field but uh, that would still put him at only plus four but kb does have to conjure actually at least four points because uh, a tie would be enough for kb Let's keep that in mind. And at least a tie is necessary for Team America because if Portugal wins one more game, that will be it. Portugal is going to win the match. Mm -hmm. So the remaining tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seems to be Quad City remaining if it is not discarded. And if it is discarded, then it, uh, it does create a dark shadow for KB because then KB would have been the starting player. Exactly. Oh, actually, KB lost a Carcassonne Champions League match earlier this year be precisely because of that situation. There was a quadruple city tile discarded and the game ended in a tie and KB was... but KB was the first player and they lost the game. Even though because of the discard, the tile that sort of lost the advantage of the starting player still rules are rules but it does seem that kb can breathe a sigh of relief no because uh paiva has a straight line and he's not able to score any quick points or anything i mean what he can do like a four point road uh one point road move there's mm -hmm. really not all that much and he just calmly will he lie down it almost even doesn't matter whoa well that's oh that's a tile oh uh, yeah well looks like we are gonna be seeing a decider which i like Yes, and actually I think, yeah, that, that's basically what this game was coming down to, this this Monastery Tile, because uh, had Paiva drawn this Monastery Tile, Paiva would have placed it over here for six points, I think. Yeah, or, or you know, Paiva oh, could have but, drawn it to move earlier. Oh, but but there there would have been an eight-point spot on the right, which would expand the field by one, by, by one, by, by one city as oh, well. Oh, yes, 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 right over here, that would be even better, so... Uh, 
Uh, players were flipping for the monastery and KB got the better of the coin flip, equalizing the big farm. He was going to have quite the advantage with these two meeples equalizing these two yellow meeples. But of course, the scoreboard is going to make the difference. And the United States still alive in this match. We're going to see exactly what the scoreboard or the score difference is in just a second. Well, uh, okay, yeah, right over here. Oh, plus 16 for the Americans. So a confident win ready for the final kb is asking well i'm not sure if they're ready but we need to watch another decider first which is halfway through between joan margarido and zach bell former american champion from two years ago or, or three years ago i don't remember but at some point i think they were the american champion uh all right see joan margarido i think the champion of portugal from last year and uh one tile remaining in that game. We may be witnessing the final moments of the match because uh, Margarido is ahead 19 points. And uh, Zach Bell, do they have enough stuff to compensate these 19 points? Will they do? I see a lot of blue meeples on fields. At least there's that. There are. Uh, indeed, blue does have a... like. Pretty significant uh, field advantage, but I think actually no, Jack will, uh, cannot. Why oh, can't he? No, he can even win the win, win the the northern field as well because now Jack will is able to unite. Oh wait, no, 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 never mind. Never mind. I, 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 okay. I, I, I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. I know. Sorry. I know. I know. <laughs> These are the camouflage green meeples. So here's the situation: the main field, which is worth one, two, three, four, uh, four cities, so twelve points, is controlled by three green meeples. Therefore, blue should not go over here. This would, in fact, be like a move which gives him negative fourteen points. No, no, negative like. 20 ne yeah negative 20 negative 26 points if he makes this blunder if he makes this blunder this is gonna negative 26 point move uh the reason why this would be a blunder is because this would unify all these fields this would add all these extra cities into the main field and this would still leave blue with a minority show so blue should be on his knees thanking the Car uh, the Carcassonne developers of Board Game Arena for giving him this tile because João Margarido really wanted this tile and he just needs to breathe a semi sigh of relief and just use it elsewhere. But where exactly? Where exactly does he use it? I see three points here, here, here. I only see three points moves. Which probably not going to be enough for him. Yeah, I just did some quick maths, and I don't think uh, it mattered where Sackville placed this tile to. I think uh, he was still gonna be. Oh wait, 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 wait! Oh wait, wait, wait! No, no, he, he might actually win because he has plus fifteen on the on the fields. A little bit less, yes. I believe. But sure. Oh, but the, but he, was 15 a 15 point field a tie but the, the tie favors you out oh oh no oh, oh, oh this was so close hurt. though wait th does the tie actually favor you out was it yeah no discarded tiles i think no discarded tiles so the tile favors you margarido and with a tie he wins this match. It was Zach Bell who was the starting player and had the advantage. Therefore, according to the rules, the win is granted to João Margarida, uh, the captain of Team Portugal. And Portugal has won this match. At you least know what? three against one. What? There was a there was a win. There, there was a win for Zach Bell. Go on. Because yeah, because um, Zach Bell's penultimate tile was the Dorito that he used to block off Margarito from the 15-point field. 
But because there were only two tiles remaining, one of the one of, one of them was the Quad City and one of them was the Dagger. Then if Margarito just trusts that he that he's gonna get the dagger, then he can just add two points to his uh, to his uh, either ruin, and then Margarito is just gonna be forced to add two points to Sackbell's ruin, with with with, with a quad city. He can't he can't score points anywhere. Oh my God! You're so right. He missed a a, a four CCCC opportunity again. Like if this tile over here goes anywhere like here then and actually wow I, will be forced to go I, over here no yeah and actually even if jack bell meeples that dorito he still wins yes yeah he could just go over here and meeple this dorito because this yeah. would force joao to go over here oh so unfortunate again it does seem that th this is our third time uh Looking, seeing a uh, third time this stream, seeing Team America win, uh, miss an endgame opportunity to win this match. So certainly adds extra to the heartbreak. Well, thanks for pointing this out, Otto. But uh, congratulations to my Portuguese fans. I see many of you are happy and not the first time of João Margarido delivering the match uh, win for his viewers. Oh, um... Hi Douglas, hi Ramzes, Thank it's great to know that we're being watched in uh, Cuba as well. Hi Joao, congratulations on the happiness. Did you see that your opponent had a potential win? Uh, but anyway, this of course would have required them to not only find the move, but also um, to win the coin flip. Well, the match is not over. We are congratulating Team Portugal, but uh, we, we don't know the score because there's still a decider between KB and Paiva that needs to be watched. I've just opened that game, 55 tiles remaining, the game is still young, and this is important for the tiebreakers because a reminder for the tournament format, it is, not impo it is important not only to win the match, but also to win the match with a high score and po as possible. If Paiva wins this game, then Portugal, Portugal will win 4 versus 1. If uh, KB wins this game, then Portugal will win three versus two, the minimum possible advantage. And here we are mm, in a closed position with neither player managing to complete a city yet. Of course, uh, the players have completed a couple of roads, which is why they both have... Uh, Eight points on the scoreboard, but that's about it. Three meeples in hand, three yellow, three black, a monastery for each side, a couple of open cities for both sides over here and over here, and a city on the right which is looking to be developed into a ruin. So Otto, do you think either of the sides has an advantage yet? Well, I would certainly actually uh, favor the. Oh, I would certainly would like to be on the side of black, um, just because um, I don't like the situation with, uh, with with the ruin on the right or a city on the right uh, that Paiva has, because it is in a terrible position at the moment, as uh, uh, anything that goes to either side. Or of of um, of, of Paiva City that connects uh, them to to KB's part is going to offer a blocking spot, a, a full blocking spot to the other hole. So that that's just a, a horrible situation to be in because you just you, you can't do anything. You can just wait until you maybe draw a divider and get yourself out of the situation, but that can take a a really long time. And meanwhile, you are likely going to be in a in a big meeple, or not 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 in, not in a big meeple, not in a big meeple disadvantage, but in a meeple disadvantage anyways. And it's going to be um, just really uncomfortable time for you in general. When um, meanwhile, Black is just able to uh, to get his uh, meeples out from other features and just enjoy the maple advantage so 
despite uh, Paiva finishing that uh, um, 12 point, I think 12 point, yeah, 12 point uh, city, I still somewhat favor black. So this just purely because of the ruin. Well, yeah, I mean, two dividers, it ain't, it ain't nothing. And, but I would say that divider is the best case scenario because maybe yellow can draw like one of these two guys, maybe a triple city with a shield. If he goes here, then black will have not so many blocking tiles. So black maybe would have like a, a Dorito with a road to block, but it's not that likely. But still, like, even if red, uh, yellow manages to c successfully connect over here and over here, this ruin will still be attackable in case that is even successful. So it's just like really not worth of the effort. And it's a really tricky position Antonio has gotten himself to be in. But in the meantime, the American has found, I think, the best position for the curve, pre-building his monastery, kind of preparing to finish it with a monastery spot. But he was too shy to meeple the road, but luckily he gets away with it and meeples the road now as Paiva was only able to draw a city tile, not a road tile, which he can't complain because he got a meeple back and four extra points on the scoreboard from the city at the bottom. Paiva, now start the city on the right. I, I do gotta criticize Paiva's uh, previous move, just being like very, like extra, extra careful, finishing his one point city at, at the bottom instead of having multiple open cities just let's if, if if we ignore the ruin i mean uh, just opening another city at the exact same spot that he now opened a, a new city at would have caused a significant threat to kb because by was because by was able to see that kb built a, a pre-built a six point road and definitely wanted to meeple that so I think KB would have been, I think, uh, would, have, would have still mebled that six-point road um, if Baiva had that city cap um, pointing to the right in the same spot that he now has. But it would have caused, uh, it would have been a, a larger threat, whereas now um, the threat does not uh, pose such a, a great threat harm because it comes just one turn later exactly yeah so there wasn't really any rush in finishing that city at the bottom this could have been done a little bit later there's still plenty of city caps remaining in the game Biva has plenty of meeples to play with and kb now playing uh, like there is no tomorrow he's risking to get two of his meeples blocked because if Biva if Paiva gets a Dorito tile, then Paiva's gonna go over here. This Meeple's gonna get trapped with two or three points. This Meeple's gonna get trapped with six points. And this open piece will be subject to endless development. And these four, four points could turn into ten. Oh, like four, six, eight, ten. Who knows how many points? So, really, the. Um, American here is playing with fire, starting such a blocking move, but Paiva doesn't quite draw the Dorito to punish him, and KB gets away. But I, I have a feel, yeah, so he decides to get away with this. Well, there are some possibilities. Maybe Paiva can pre-finish here, and Paiva can actually go over here and try to contest this road. Honestly, not the worst idea, if you ask me. I think actually he should do that right now. Oh, but of course, defending at the top is also a priority. So maybe he can attack this road a little bit later. KB gets a city tile. As Paiva is able to defend his ruin, still a lot of work is needed to complete that as KB uh, draws a city cap, completes a city and does not meeple the field. I think you always meeple the field here. It's just such Absolutely. a natural move. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, yeah it, it's just like a six point field. And now that Paiva poses a threat of grabbing those dividers, in in like in the worst case, well, because now there are still uh, three uh, field Doritos. Then now, meepling the field is is even more essential to prevent that nine point field uh, tempo move. Yeah, well, 
KB is scoring quick points as Paiva decided not to finish his city, uh, not finish, finish his monastery with the Dorito Tal, but instead to cover up his top city. And now it is abundantly clear that the plans of the Portuguese player are to complete this ruin in full. However, there are still two dividers in play, and KB certainly could bail out at some point. Paiva now in a tricky situation because Paiva now either needs to use this monastery spot, which is really awkward and really restricted from both sides and give KB a meeple back, or he has to use this monastery spot, which makes his city over here slightly vulnerable and he could get two meeples trapped there. And there aren't really many good monastery spots, so he instead just discards such a beautiful tile and this is tragic. It is tragic, but I, I gotta say, I rather like it. <laughs> Just given the the very awkward monastery spots, like you don't really want to give your opponent a meeple back and then have your meeple in a very awkward spot with with the monastery. And there was no, there was really no place uh, that was gonna be like extremely beneficial for for Paiva to actually meeple the monastery like like uh, like you said if he if he meeples that uh, at the uh, at, at the upper squares then there are only two triple cities remaining and uh, it might very quickly backfire on um, and uh, become the a, a, and become a literal a, a literal death sentence for him i mean maybe could go there and just meeple the field, but that poses the same exact threat. Just uh, like just too, too too few triple cities um, to go to effectively then build the uh, oh, uh, the, to to then effectively complete the city, and that and that also exposes the city to an attack. So not really too many great great options all um all together yeah and that's why he decided to basically not use any of them mm, well in the meantime we finally see a farmer in the game uh, from paiva after kb uh, kind of pre-finished his long road and started a new city oh kb is now getting scared trying to block the square and paiva gets a tile that he should not use over here under any circumstances he should go over here and actually hope to complete one of his cities still plenty of road doritos left three should he go over here i'm not i'm not actually sure that uh, he, he should do that because now he can actually make a, a full save exactly like this and now he can use both both types of triangles very very effectively and it's not guaranteed that if if paiva uh, go, went to the right and tried to finish his city, it, it's not guaranteed at all that KP would not attack it immediately after and then uh, to, and then uh, Paiva would just feel kind of stupid uh, having finished KP's road. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah I, this, is, this is what I was saying. I was saying that he should not go over here, but instead he should do the full save up top because there is still... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so of course uh, I completely agree with you and there was still an option to go here later but of course now this is not going to happen because KB draws the last dagger and KB ain't going to go over here he ain't going to play with fire he ain't going to risk this city getting completed so this city will be trapped with seven points but this road will also be trapped with six points so a slightly winning mini battle here for Paiva and absolutely a decent chance to finish both of these cities despite the fact that KB now draws a very good tile. He decides to farm, finally. Paiva gets a monastery tile which goes over here. Oh, this is so beautiful. Four points for the road and expanding the farm. And a 12-point field at the bottom, just like that, outscoring the six-point field of Paiva. But of course, this field will get bigger eventually, and Paiva will probably have to fight for it. He might have to... Draw a Dorito with a road tile and maybe farm over here, hoping for one of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, for the only remaining curve. No, that doesn't seem really appealing. But there are some entry points into this field through here. 
or through here through the triangle so i do believe we're going to see many more farmers in this game kb tries to attack the farm at the bottom to connect through here paiva does not draw a tile to block and now continues his ruin at the bottom instead kb uh, finishes the fields connection successfully so this farm at the bottom is now equalized it actually doesn't have many good access points or at least all of the access points are blockable Baiva with a splitter tile will need to think whether it's a good idea to finish this four point city maybe not maybe he's gonna go up top start a city hope to complete eight points maybe he's gonna do something else kind of difficult move to find what would you do here otto well i do have to kind of disagree with with paiva's previous move first of all i think um since it was already possible for kb to fully block the the eight point monastery of paiva restricting it to a triple city with a road i think paiva could have just very well taking uh, taken an eight point city on his previous move, because there, there was still one starting tile uh, left in the game, so he would not have blocked his own monastery entirely. And uh, now he would have a great use for this starting tile, which he might like still take, now just take four points for the city and restrict his own monastery to the starting tile, which I th I don't think would be a would be a bad move at all, considering that uh, Paiwa does have major threats of finishing the large city okay chickened out chickened out he thought that oh you know i haven't been drawing these doritos for such a long time i'm just gonna bail out to get a meeple back but as yeah, you said now there Otto, is the full block as well exactly just just uh, like just listen to auto guys so this is what happens you don't listen to Otto, you don't get 8 points for the city, and you get your monastery blocked. This is what happens, so um, you better pay attention to my guest if you want to win games. Well, 6 points for Paiva is not going to be much of a consolation, I believe. Oh, Paiva tries to attack the 9-point field. It kind of makes sense, however, it creates a potential threat of somebody drawing the final row Dorito going over here and grabbing a regular roadless Dorito and finishing a 12-point city right there in the center. So a very volatile move here by Paiva, but maybe this is exactly what he needs. KB, with the last remaining curve, um, thinking where exactly to deploy that. Oh, I, I know, I know. Otto, do you like this? We go here, and we meeple a farm, and we try to draw a divider. And then we get the divider, connect into the field through here, and we get eight points for the city and a meeple back. Uh, well, to me, it sounds reasonable. He doesn't even need to pull the divider. Like, even a regular Dorito works fine. It's not going to be, like, as good, but I think it's going to work fine. Just given that the, the upside is still going to be at least, ni like, nine points secured. Exactly, Just... but he chooses not to do that. He chooses to start a blocking attack, which I don't like. Because even no. if he succeeds bl in blocking, this will only be a 50% block. So the chances of that are not, not great. I mean, sometimes you have to make a decision whether you block the field or you counterattack the field. And when making such a decision, one should assess the probabilities of blocking. And the probabilities of blocking are actually way, way below 50% uh, here which is not oh. a great deal for the player with the black meeples. I would also ha want, want to highlight that uh, I have actually um, uh, discussed this in, in one of my uh, analysis videos, is that you want to use or you, you want to create the threat of blocking so that you can actually complete the block with the only tile that would then have uh, that would have then uh, have been able to be placed on that block in squares. So if, uh, if if KB directs this uh, this curve upwards, then he can use the final remaining starting tile to, to finish the block. Whereas now he cannot. Exactly. Well, well, well. The Paiva still hasn't connected to the farm, though. And uh, KB is racking up quick points. Now five points behind on the scoreboard. 
Yeah, I mean, this is looking good for yellow now. I mm -hmm. want to see a seven point monastery move here. And still a chance to draw a tile that goes over here and gets four points for the city. Or maybe he's thinking of going over here, but don't do it. Don't you do it. Seven points are just fine. I mean, yeah, when, when uh, KB does not uh, does not present a a, a a threat to immediate block, it's not going to be worth it. Well, Pivot discards the monastery. Interesting choice. I'm not exactly exactly sure of of the maple uh, of of the point count here. Um, but, 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 but where else are you going to get uh, this many points? Seven points with a chance of eight. Okay, Baiva mm -hmm. has actually a strong move. Check this out. So KB semi-blocked this square over here, So there, but there's still one starting tile that, that remains. But Paiva, if he wants, he can go over here and hope... And this, will, this is going to be like already a six-point move. And he can hope for the last remaining Dorito with a rogue that goes over here. And then gives him back this thing. Oh, that would be strong. I would reckon so. Especially if Paiva needs to risk. And it... With, um, the, actually, does Paiva need to risk? Because I... The, the point count is going to be like really important here. Because Paiva already has um, some... Uh, points on on the on, on the map and he's leading by five points so does he actually need that city or or how much does he actually need to risk at all well pive is at plus six if i counted correctly but the problem for pive is that kb has a wind path through drawing this dorito which will give him eight points for the city and a meeple back and of course there's still the chance of kb going over here and dropping a farmer and trying to connect mm -hmm. through here or through here. So it's not that Paiva is behind or anything, but KB has threats. And if I'm Paiva, I'm wanting to create counter threats. And the idea of going over here, well, if this doesn't work out, we have a six point city anyway, like it's not a bad idea. So for example, KB, don't take quick point, go over here, like meeple that farm. Cause we need to, actually maybe don't. Yeah, I forgot that. Ah, no, the, the KB is still ahead because this meeple is not in the field yet. Duh. Well, your plan would have worked flawlessly. Yeah, at least my plan would have worked. So, <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, but, but oh, I think, but all all curves are gone. No, all curves are gone. But I think so. This I is simply and I. Yeah, maybe he doesn't know that. I actually would have liked better to just lay down on the field like two tiles right to like just anticipate either the 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 um, uh, uh, field triangle or the or the divider because like now he's well uh, he's of course at anticipating the um, uh, the divider but. Uh, I think he wants to connect through the right, like this. And I think his idea is, if KB draws a divider, then he's going to finish two cities, not one city. So basically this move is mm -hmm. a defense from the divider tile, and he now hopes to get either something like a crossroads plus divider to connect through the right, or the starting tile to connect from the, for the left, and I think either of them are going to be enough. I believe it's dead equal, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's actually, I think KB is at plus two. I could be wrong, but KB also has an extra meeple. 11, 6, 6, 8, minus 1. Oh, thank yeah. you for the kind looks, of words, Yogo. Looks to be exactly even. Oh. And now KB takes... Yeah. Okay. Well, curvy, curvy well, tile goes there. Mm -hmm. And now I think Paiva has like 
maybe two winning tiles, like the, the divider and the starting tile. Meep of the road, be greedy, greedy, greedy. Just to get the five points for the road, and then we get also... the divider. Mm -hmm. KB just discards the tile. But it ain't gonna help him because Paiva should now meeple the seven point monastery here. And then Paiva's gonna draw maybe a divider or maybe this. He has two meeple tiles out of three. I'm not sure what the third tile is. Uh, well, it doesn't matter really because Paiva is now plus one and he just needs one of the two tiles to win. Uh, is he plus one? I mean, he hasn't connected to the field yet. Mm -hmm, I know. But uh, even without connecting to the field, I think he's plus one. Yeah. Because the monastery at I... the moment is is compensating for the nine point field. Oh right, 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 right. There's also the ruin on the left, though. But yeah. Yep. Uh, KB was momentarily plus six. Well, I mean, at least to my to my calculations, I mean, it it wouldn't be the first time that I'm I'm wrong though. <laughs> <laughs> but but KB can win with a divider now because KB drew the tile that uh, yellow needed over here, so KB mm -hmm. can go here, meeple a six point road, and just hope, 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 pray for the divider. And oh no, Paiva doesn't get any of his two tiles. He gets a crossroad. <sighs> Which needs he needs to go here, of course. He needs to find the best move because he needs to block a move that will give KB three more points for his city. So he needs to be technical. But I believe we've just witnessed an unfortunate loss for the Portuguese player who found some really good threats but just didn't draw his 66% chance of winning. This also means that the block here from KB totally worked. Because this crossroads now doesn't fit here. He found the, the the best move. I mean, credit for that. But KB is just going to drop a divider anywhere on the board and be joyful. Because Team USA will come close to winning this match. As I believe this is going to be KB's duel here. Actually, why... Was that crossroad necessary? Because KB was not going to be able to make a three-point a, a three-point city on his own field. It would be on on Paiva's field. Am I missing something here? I mean, this doesn't change the outcome. But why was that crossroad necessary? Why was that the be the best placement? Oh, be oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, I I forgot that this city cap was not in the main field. Okay. Uh, I just assumed that the city cap was over here, and I think this is what Paiva assumed as well. Minus five, well, certainly a heartbreaking loss in this duel for a game which seems to which seemed to go quite well for the player with yellow meeples, but uh, the silver lining, or or the gold lining, should I rather say, is that Portugal yet again proves why it is such an unstoppable force and wins the match three versus two. Certainly congratulations to the USA 2 for the honorable fight and uh, for getting some of the tiebreakers against probably the group's strongest team. And we wish both teams the best of luck in other um, matches. But don't leave yet. I, of course, uh, prepared a little surprise for one of the winning teams, which is no longer a surprise. Uh, it will take me one more minute to prepare, but in the meantime, feel free to add any questions to uh, my special guest, uh, Otto. 14, oh yeah, you're commenting on the stats, that's only 14 minutes, or only 14 meeples placed for Paiva. That's a Out of curiosity, do you, um, what's? Uh, I, I'm not sure if they, if this even can be calculated. Probably can, but like, what is the average um, an, an average uh, meeple count that have been placed? Like um, in terms of of like I don't know the the competitive players all together. <laughs> <laughs> like where 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 is the where is the magic line where for where uh, the amount of meeples placed turns into not low but like I don't know medium 
and then from medium to high because okay, so, okay, so i'm not i'm not sure medium is like 17 18 okay uh, you have also like a very high uh meeple count i uh I have a very, very high meeple count as well, but I think there are some players with even higher, closer to 19. Uh, my highest ever placed number of meeples per game was 27. It only happened... Uh, this this only happened once, but this means basically almost... So it's 27 moves out of 35 that you had a meeple placed. It happened one in 10,000 games, so this is pretty rare. And my lowest was... Well, the lowest that, that can be is 7, of course, because this means that you get all your meeples trapped and score for 0 points, and um, this sometimes happens. So 14 is really not a lot. Yeah. Also, remind you all to meeple the like button if you enjoyed the, it's the match, or the outcome of this match, or anything about this match. And in case you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It's important for the algorithm, anything. And also, if anything's, if anyone's feeling particularly generous, I've enabled the super thanks button. If y'all can afford this, that would also be very much appreciated. Craftgraph saying 18.6 meeple average share. This is very high. This is much higher than most players. Keep those questions coming. I need to still complete my setup. So I might be interested to review these games later on this week as uh, as the next opponent for Portugal is indeed going to be against Finland. So uh, maybe I can uh, revise some uh, some tactics, although I'm, I do admit that I am not a, a huge fan of using a whole lot of time to uh, to uh, actually like analyze a, a play style of 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 an opponent, I don't think it matters as much. Uh, I know Alexei uh, does disagree with me like heavily, but uh, I don't think it plays that big of a part. Yes, yes, I uh, disagree with you heavily, but uh, but uh, today you are the guest, so you get the, splash, the special uh, treatment. So don't analyze your opponent's game, just try to get better at Carcassonne. That's the best way to coach. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Please share your meeple average. We can take a little poll here. Still continuing preparations. Just, 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 just bear with me. Yes, I knew that's going to happen at some point. Hopefully, ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get for forgetting clamps. I agree, Crafty. It's like soccer. You have to let your opponent adjust your own play style. I mean, you know, that's kind of the salt of Carcassonne. You gotta, um, uh, you gotta achieve a, a position where your opponent is as uncomfortable as it can possibly be. Because then it's gonna take a heavy toll when there's gonna be a lot of thinking and it might be just one mistake that you need from your opponent uh, to do to make the decisive error and to actually maybe just even run off with the rest of the game. Okay, I'm going to give you the the weirdest camera angle possible because this is this is uh, the best I could do. Uh, it's a bit of a messy day. So, are you going to witness a bit of a, contempor a piece of contemporary art? 
Oh, wait, not yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so delayed. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. So we're gonna wait until that works. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Douglas is saying waiting for tomorrow's game. Let's go Brazil. I think. Oh yeah, it's Brazil against Catalonia. I have already subscribed to play, uh, to streaming Belgium against Peru, which happening at the same time. But surely we'll try to catch at least a small a glimpse. <laughs> um, at least a small glimpse of what's uh, gonna happen in that match as well. Okay, I'm also having a brain fog. I actually need to do something. I need to uh, check the beginning of the Portuguese anthem. I'm I'm just completely losing it. Okay, well, the first meanwhile, three? yeah. Meanwhile, why don't I answer to Grant this uh, question? Um, uh, do you uh, do your teammates uh, ask for your advice, or do you force them to listen to you? Um, great question. Um, it is kind of a like 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 yes to both uh, like to both like separate questions. Because I am pushing uh, my teammates um, uh, like more or less hard to actually have those um, private training sessions, and it has actually paid off um, because I have been able to now have a, a private session um, with uh, over, with over half of the team, and with some of them, uh, with, with some of them, I have had a uh, the. Uh, the possibility of to, of doing actually multiple sessions, and I have seen a tremendous amount of uh, of development in a in a very 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 um, short period of time. And they have also said themselves um, that uh, they have noticed the difference, which makes me really happy, as I know that my efforts are not going to go in vain. But um, Asked, asked to do they ask for my advice i would say so because um uh, given the fact that um uh, when, whenever i have um offered the chance um, to do the sessions I'm, I'm not forcing anyone to like like fully i'm giving them the chance um that they now have that um that we can that we can do the training sessions if they want to and um and they themselves have agreed to to do so, and to uh, uh, and to get or, or to reap the benefits <laughs> from that. So I would say that uh, they yes they do ask for my for my advice, and I also force them too. <laughs> well, you do realize Otto that you're sharing your team's secret with literally uh, your next opponents. So this certainly takes some confidence to share secrets and uh, and um... I am I am fully aware of it and maybe it's just you know just the the mental distraction that I'm causing to Team Portugal now. Ooh, they you're, you're will gonna now be, afraid. be going through all your games, all the games of your teammates, trying to study them. Like th th that's great, that's great. This is exactly what we want and. I'll of course do my best to try and stream the game uh, Finland against Portugal, but of course you'll have to agree on a time first. Well, speaking of Team Portugal, to congratulate Team Portugal for winning this uh, WTCOC 2024 match against the Team United States, uh, all please rise for the national anthem of Portugal.
congratulations to Team Portugal again. And uh, before leaving, I need to make some announcements. There will be two more streams tomorrow. France against China in the morning. That would be 1300 UTC. And then they're going to be a long stream at 1600 UTC or, or 10 minutes before 1600 UTC. That is going to be... Um, who's playing? <laughs> I, I forgot who I... Oh, I actually forgot who I'm playing. The second match is Belgium versus Peru. The first match is, oh, Argentina versus Spain. Oh, I need to learn the Argentinian anthem in, in case they win. <laughs> okay, still work in progress. I'm going to have quite a uh, long night today learning all these anthems. Um, yes. Uh, so yeah, make sure to tune in tomorrow. Uh, meeple the like button, anything, and... Uh, will wrap things up uh thank you foam and thank you so much otto for joining us with your uh wise commentary and ruthless roast of players mistake uh, of course i need to remind you that otto uh has a youtube channel himself for which is really really taking uh, taking off now with uh games analysis and of course streams of matches as well i'm pretty sure we're going to see some more wtcoc uh, matches on otto's channel that's at nalaheim so make sure to subscribe to that as well speak of which otto do you have plans for your streams next time uh when could that be or is that already next week uh, it is very, very likely going to be next week indeed. Um, this week was only an exception, as I uh, I had some business in my uh, at, at my uh, um, parents, so that's the only obstacle for this week when that I wasn't able to stream. Um, of course, I'm not, I wasn't going to be streaming Finland's match as I was playing in it, but starting from next week it looks like i'm going to have plenty of uh, free weekends and free weeks um otherwise too so you can be sure to expect some games to be um, announced sooner or later on the on the channel in um, in terms of the streams Well, uh, so you heard it. So for that, you're going to need to subscribe to Auto first. The link is in the chat. That's it. Uh, for all Europeans, let's go sleep. And uh, for all of y'all in the Western Hemisphere, I hope you'll have a good evening. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to see you soon.